Hey, what's going on there, folks? Welcome back here to a Wednesday night update. Technically, Thursday morning here in California, just after midnight, March 28th, 2024. Uh, latest activity here on the globe. Let's go check that out real quick and see what we got. Looks like a 3.5 in the South America region there, the red flag, and also a 1.3 up into the area of alaska so what do we got here over the last 24 hours anything uh further up here across northern california well it looks like for the most part here things have kind of calmed down out here across the northern california area the last earthquake there was at 3.1 in the petrolia area uh, this comes after of course uh, a decent amount of earthquake activity here across the gorda ridges uh, really not seeing anything further uh, going on here uh, this evening so um, just we'll continue to keep an eye on that further down into California handful of smaller quakes really nothing major going on uh, extensively down into Southern California way down in Southern Cal doesn't look like too much activity either a couple small very small micro quakes out here in the last 24 hours the rest of the region including the Pacific Northwest here a little small activity out there mostly ones if you look at the last 24 hours in terms of 2.5 and above, it really makes all of the earthquakes disappear out here, except for that 3.1 that occurred uh, earlier this morning in the uh, uh, Petrolia area. So things are just kind of quiet out there across the West Coast for now. Typical movement here across Texas. And uh, one little lonesome earthquake way up here in the Northeast around the New Hampshire area. 2.2 near Guilford. Guilford. 5.5 kilometers for that 2.2. Occasionally, they do see some earthquakes up there. As far as historical hazard goes, uh, it is within a region that can see some large damaging earthquakes. Um, uh, that would be another video there that we'll have to cover in terms of uh, the potential out there in that region of the world. As far as the South America region goes, it uh, looks like a 5.1, the latest earthquake here into the Peru area, actually underneath this area. 150 kilometers deep or so. The Atlantic Ocean, pretty quiet. Far as the, uh, the Tonga Trench goes, it looks like another deep earthquake coming in there to the area of the Tonga Trench. 4.4, 200 kilometers deep. As uh, far as New Zealand goes, um, let's see what we got down here. Mostly looks like some shallow earthquake activity out here. Really not seeing anything major going on, but let's just double check the GeoNet servers here. From, uh, let's see, where are we at? There we go. Let's see if anything's going on here across the area. Looks like a 3.8 down across the South Island area. Very shallow there off the plate boundary, about 12 kilometers deep or so. Uh, 3.4 underneath the North Island area again, getting some deep earthquakes there, 268 kilometers. Um, a real quick search here in the last month. Let's do this real quick. I want to show you guys the uh, the deep earthquake activity that's occurring there underneath that area. And we're going to go uh, 150 mile or 150 kilometers, and then deeper than that over the last 30 days underneath the entire area of North Island. Now I want to show you guys what's going on here. There's a lot of deeper activity going on underneath this area. This is all deep quakes occurring. Uh, below 150 kilometers there and it looks like we got uh, 173 or so in the last month you can see some of these really deep quakes there uh, below uh, 200 kilometers in the darker green circles so nothing big but this just goes to show you here that the uh, area of the southern end of the Kermadec Trench and the Hikarangi subduction zone they're fairly active uh, in terms of the deeper movement there has been some surface adjustment going on there uh, up across this area. You can see some of those uh, uh, shallower quakes out here across the Hawks Bay area. Got a little swarming going on there in this area. Uh, but uh, yeah, definitely some interesting activity taking place there in New Zealand recently with the deep activity. And again, a lot of that has to do with... Uh, the uh, southern end of the Kermadec Trench, but also the Hikarangi subduction zone. Now, that's a major player across the North Island area that would uh, will one day produce a, uh, I believe it's an 8.4 or so that, that it can uh, 
kick up here. Uh, historically, it has before. So there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of uh, you know what ifs with this uh, subduction zone and that deeper activity triggering down into those regions are uh, obviously a sign that things are still quite active there. Uh, let me check out the trimmer map here tonight. See what we got going on for trimmer again. Zero zip nada nothing going on. This is continuing the uh, downturn or the downtrend of trimmer count out here over the last couple of years. So I'm just kind of watching that. Uh, up into the uh, Kuro Kamachaka and the Japan tr Japan Trench, pretty quiet. The Kuro Kamachaka seen a couple earthquakes this morning. Well, I should say Wednesday morning, but uh, things look pretty quiet up there for now. Let's see here. It doesn't look like we're at the 24 hour map. There we go. That's the last 24 hours here on the globe. Uh, typical movement going on here across the Indonesia Islands area. 3.4 out here in the Australia area. Movement across the Himalayas, it looks like. Some fours and threes going on there. Did see a little bit of activity stirring up out here. Uh, just outside the Italy area, it looks like, with a 5.0 coming in. Let's check out the world earthquake map here from the EMSC model and uh, see what's going on. This kind of looks like it's up there in the... Let's see here. Let's see exactly where it's at. It does look like it's in... Uh, well, let's click on it and see what's going on. Northern Italy. Uh, it is on, along the plate boundary. Sometimes it's hard to tell the plate boundaries out here or the uh, borders. But definitely some activity stirring up out there. Uh, I know that's bigger than a 0.6. I'm not for sure why it does that. And I know it's bigger than a 0.1. So it's this map. I don't like their newer models here, but it does look like there's some activity stirring up out there with a five pointer and a couple other smaller quakes out there as well. As far as Iceland goes, um, well, let's go check it out here from the live from Iceland site. The ongoing eruption here continues for day number. Oh, I don't know. Coming up on day number 12, I think, right? Continuous eruption going on here. Let's check out the, uh, different view it looks like the sun is rising out there across the iceland area uh there's still remaining three active vents out there and they're just continuing to flow out there across the lava field filling up the uh, quarry area that was um there before the lava and uh, it just things are still continuing folks it doesn't look like there's any major change going on it's definitely a uh, interesting event compared to the last couple eruptions here. No major changes here across the term uh, across the Iceland area in terms of earthquake activity. So we'll continue to watch that. Just uh, it's one of those things. It's definitely continuing. Uh, there was a little bit of an update on a volcano in the Aleutian Trench area. Let's see. I believe it's going to be this one right here. Uh, so that page is not found. Let me see here. Go over and check out a little different model here. I don't know what's going on with this. I don't like using the uh, Microsoft Edge, but it does look like it works on occasion. Um, but I know there's more going on in this. I've seen a little alert being put out here by the uh, USGS here recently uh, with regards to a uh, volcano there in Alaska. Um, okay. Maybe it was this one. Okay. So they've redesigned their site out here. So a lot of links are not working, but, uh, this one right here, the, um, I'm not for sure how to pronounce it exactly, but it uh, looks like there was a short, small, a small short lived explosion detected earlier this evening. Uh, so the AVO is increasing the aviation code from 
uh, increasing the code to yellow and advisory from a green level. So uh, it does look like there was a little bit of uh, volcanic activity there. Just a small, short-lived explosion, but that does show that things are kind of getting elevated there across the area. Not for sure. i got to go back here and look at these uh, web pages here. This is a whole new design that uh, the Alaska Volcano Observatory put out. And also the uh, USGS volcano site in general is a lot different. So i got to go through there and um, get familiar with the uh, links and whatnot. All right, uh, so let's move on there. Past volcanoes. See what else is happening here across the rest of the world here. There's that earthquake 4.4. Uh, I think the EMSC report in that is at 5.5, but uh, okay. South America region, there's some of that deeper activity being triggered underneath the uh, Peru area. We'll continue to watch that. Definitely showing uh, shown some signs of elevated activity out here. One earthquake, it looks like a 4.5 into the area off the coast of Colombia, it looks like here. South of Panama along the plate boundary. All right, let's go check out space weather, see what's going on, and then we'll take a look at the uh, cloud cover potential. Looks like we're coming back down from an M flare, uh, a decent M flare here, it looks like, almost into the X flare category. M7.1 coming in just within the last hour or so from our large sunspot, our departing large sunspot, 3614 there, or 3615, excuse me. That's going to be this area down here that's. A region that has produced a massive amount of implers here recently. We do have some uh, decent growth going on here across this edge of that sunspot. Look at that, quite dynamic going on here. So it does look like it's going through a strengthening uh, situation here. And um, that will be, though, pretty much out of sight, out of mind here in a day or so once it's off the western limb, but it still poses some threat here for some X-flare probability. Uh, but should anything blast off from there in that position, probably will not be geo-effective. Look at this, 3615. Beautiful sunspot and some extraordinary growth going on here across this area. Uh, the overall threat looks like 25% chance for an X-flare. M-flare at 75% chance. C flare at 99 an elevated proton event here at 30 percent chance uh, just due to the uh, uh, potential of some strong flares going on there's the radio blackout being observed across the sunlit side of the earth centered over the indian ocean it looks like no major roars in the forecast things are fairly calm and minimal in that uh, res respect and uh yeah, so we'll continue to watch 3615 while it's still in view for some big time flare potential. Right now, an M, um, it's not listed up here yet, but it is above, looks like an M7, very close to a seven pointer. Not for sure what's going on there, but uh, M6.99, somewhere around there. Okay. Severe weather potential, not a whole lot here in the forecast. Let's take a look here at the numerical models. A lot of people wondering what's going on with the eclipse. You know, there's so many people we're talking about. A lot of a lot of people out there on YouTube and other social media sites trying to predict what's going on out there around the April 8th time period in terms of cloud cover and the possibility of, you know, seeing that um, in the uh the totality line so got to take this with a grain of sand a grain of sand so to speak but this right here is telling me this these last couple models that we've been checking here has been telling me that there's some type of big storm potential going on around the eighth time period some of these models have been showing a day before the day of the eclipse and the day after this one is more consistent with the day of the eclipse a pretty decent large um, severe weather maker going on out here uh, across the texas area and um, you know the time frame is going to be right about here for the um, totality 
window. And technically, Texas, uh, that's, you know, it's within a totality line here. And, of course, other areas stream up, go up through this line. But it looks like we're going to be uh, inundated of cloud cover. But it does look like the uh, storm system out there is going to be a, a massive one. Look at that low pressure, severe weather potential. Uh, let's go over and double check here from the weather dot c o d dot education site here there's a these are long range models that kind of forecast a bunch of stuff you know aside from cloud cover you can look at many different things here it's pretty cool to check out all the weather models included up here as well but we're going to check out the gfs model and see what it looks like around the april 8th time period and that's going to be roughly about so that's going to be about 6 p.m. or so we're going to want right about there and unfortunately goodness <laughs> that only shows a little window of opportunity out here across this area of texas and i think that's outside of the totality line as far as the clearing go goes the cloud cover right here is in the white that's a hundred percent coverage and basically the storm system um, covers the entire totality line out here across the area of many different states that oh, so many people have you know made some big plans including me uh, I, I do plan on going out there but uh, I'm you know taking this day by day we're looking at various weather models and uh, it's a ways out there um, I think within about, if, if you guys want a window of opportunity here in specifics in terms of um, accuracy, probably about 72 hours. So roughly about, you know, three days prior to the eclipse, we'll definitely check back on this and that should give us an accurate detail. But most of these weather models that we keep checking are telling us that there's some type of big weather system taking place out here across the area around the April 8th time period. Now, whether the storm system is going to scoot up, move on, we'll have to see. But most of the weather models right now showing that it's uh, kind of slowing down, which is making that uh, not good timing, right, for the uh, eclipse. Possible. I mean, there's, it's hard to say. At six o'clock to uh, you know who knows we'll have to definitely watch this and see what happens uh either way um california we got a big storm system coming in not a big one but it's a it's an okay one here for a late system storm we normally don't get a lot of rain here towards the end of march or april but uh got a decent weather maker coming in bringing some rain and some snow up here to the higher mountains in the california area Southern California getting in on that as well. Really not expecting any major flooding concerns. This is basically a weather maker that will keep the grass greener for another month or so. And that storm system moves over and uh, interacts with uh, the area, area across the Texas area and uh, Midwest regions, bringing some severe weather threat. It's not until about the end of... The end of, uh, is it next week already? Goodness, end of next week here that we start noticing another deep trough. And this is a trough that's going to affect the eclipse potential. Um, it does look like it forms another low pressure system off of the main one down here, which picks up some further remaining moisture. And that kicks up across the Texas area around the eclipse time period. So we'll continue to watch that though. It's it's uh you know it would be very unfortunate right i think it'd be just not cool <laughs> but we'll see what happens see if mother nature wants to uh provide us with a uh a total eclipse or maybe just a few minutes of darkness underneath cloudy skies all right folks i'm out of here i am ready for bed it's bedtime after midnight actually it's a couple hours past bedtime have a good night. We'll catch you guys back out here uh, for the Thursday morning update here after a few hours of sleep. I hope everyone stays safe and has a, uh, a good rest of the night. Take care, folks.